In this video, we are going to learn about the very basics of lighting and how to set up both real time and back lighting for an interior scene like this one here. This video is completely beginner friendly as I think lighting can be a very complicated topic, but I'll make sure to keep this as simple as possible. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, so we're gonna start off with a completely empty unity scene. So I've just got the camera and the directional lighting. But the first thing before we get started is to use the Unity's uh, Universal Render Pipeline. And I've already heard this in my project. But if you don't, just go to Windows and Package Manager and here search for Universal RP. So let's just go ahead and import this to your Unity project. And once it's finished importing, all you need to do is right click and create. Go to rendering, universal render pipeline and click on this and click on this pipeline asset. And you'll see a couple icons like this one here and this will be your uh, pipeline asset. I've gone ahead and made a couple of copies for different quality settings, high, medium and low. You actually need one to get started. And as for the environment, I'm using this one here from Barking Dogs 3D Free Modular Kit. I've already installed it. It's actually pretty low on size, so we're just gonna go ahead and use this one. So once you download it, you'll see a folder like this. And inside of the 3D Modular Kit, you will see a sample scene. So what I've done is I made a prefab of the whole level. So if I just drag and drop this inside of my scene, we'll have the complete environment in our scene. It looks something like this and another thing that I've done is get all of the lightings inside another game object that I've saved as a prefab here. So this scene doesn't have any lights. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the light fixtures using this prefab here. It will add all of the lights inside of the scene as you can see here. So now we have all of our light fixtures here. If I just zoom in on one of them, it looks something like this. And each of these lights have this uh, emissive neon material as you can see here. Alright so now basically our scene is ready. So we're just gonna get rid of the directional lighting because we want to start from scratch. Alright but our scene still looks bright. We don't have any lights and you might be wondering why. If we go to the lighting tab you will see we are using the skybox as the source of our environment lighting. So let's get rid of this and instead use color. And now we can have more control over the environment lighting. So let's just go uh, complete dark. And now we don't see any of the lighting here except for these emissive materials. And we can also get rid of them for now so we can start from stretch. And here you can see the emission is enabled. We can just go ahead and disable this. We won't be able to see any lighting inside the scene whatsoever. And we can also go ahead and change the color of these emissive material. But for now we're gonna keep this as is. And this seems to be a good starting point. So let's go to the lighting step. And what I'm gonna do is change the ambient color to a slightly grayish. So we can actually see our environment just a tiny bit. And now we are ready to add the lightings to our environment. But before we actually do that, let's open up the project settings. And here we need to find the player settings, go to other settings and change the color space from gamma to linear. So make sure you set it to linear as the environment appears more natural than the gamma lighting. And now we are finally ready to add some lightings to our scene. I already have the light fixtures so we can just go ahead and add lights to these uh, light fixtures. But I've already gone ahead and made a prefab that has all the positions and transform for each of the lighting. And here we go. So as you can see, I have a bunch of spotlights in our scene now. Well, technically these are the point lights. As you can see, these are, these are actually point lights with pretty much the default settings. As you can see, I've just changed the color of some of the lights to blue and uh, purple. All right, so yeah, this is how the scene looks with the lighting. So now we can just go ahead and play around with some of the light settings. Also if we zoom in on the on these emissive materials, 
we can see they don't actually glow like like a light source so in order to make these look like lighting we need to go to the project settings and find the rendering pipeline asset that we are using and also make sure that you have assigned the pipeline asset to the rendering slot here so you can use the multiple quality settings like I've done here so different pipeline assets for different quality settings right now I'm using the high quality so I'm just gonna click on this go to the quality drop down and make sure the HDR is enabled and as soon as you enable this you can see a slight changing in the emissive material they begin to glow but still they don't act like a light source right and in order to make sure that they act like a light source we need to use the post processing effects so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new empty multi game object and I'm just gonna call it post processing or PP for short and make sure the transform is reset and now let's add the volume script make sure the mod is set to global let's create a new post processing profile here all right and now we can use the overrides here let's hit add override post processing and we're gonna use bloom to make sure that these emissive materials act like a light source and to enable all of these settings at once just click on all and now we can uh, play around with these settings let's set the intensity to uh, 2 maybe yeah it seems a bit too much but we're gonna change it later as for the threshold I'm just going to keep it at 1.5 or something so that only the brightest of the materials get to glow and now as you can see these MSM materials start to act like a light source right and yeah I know I need to change the color of the lights but for now I'm just gonna keep it as is but as you can see the problem here is the MSM materials are glowing inside of the scene but in the game view we don't actually see anything and that is because we also need to uh, make the camera render the post processing effects and here make sure the post processing is enabled and as soon as you do this we can see the post processing effects work on the game view and yeah it looks quite good already but I know we can do a much better job at this so let's go back and change this a bit and also I'm sure you can not notice these uh, light artifacts that we can see here and that is because we are using the point lights instead of a spotlight so if we just go change the type you will see that the light no longer hits the ceilings and that is what we want actually because the light fixtures are pointing down and not upwards so so yeah it would make sense if the light goes down and not hit the ceiling but as you can see our ceiling gets completely dark so for now we are going to use the point lights and I'm gonna show you how to fix this without changing the type to spotlights and the next thing we want to do is add some more reflections to our scene and for that we're just gonna add a reflection prop to our environment right click light and reflection prop here it is and if we have to focus on it you can see this box which indicates the area that this reflection prop will work and we can change this using this box size settings so let's increase the size to fix all of the environment something like this appears to be good right also what we need to do is enable the box projection and keep all of these settings as is for now and also change the type from back to real time because we want to see how it looks in real time and as you can see now the environment starts to reflect more lighting and it looks good so you can see the effect of the reflection probe on our environment also make sure you keep the refresh mode to on awake if the scene is completely static like this one here we can also play around with the intensity let's bump it up to like 1.2 so whatever works for you you can just go crazy with it and yeah for now 1.2 looks to be a good value Alright so after the reflection prop the next thing we need to do is go to the post processing effects and we're gonna add another override which will be the um, tone mappings 
Let's just find the tone mapping here. And let's enable this. We're gonna change the mode to S's. And it will give our environment a more cinematic look, as you can see, but it also makes it a bit too dark for our test, right? So in order to counteract this, we are going to add another override, which will be a color adjustment. And for this one, I'm just gonna set the post exposure to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, yeah 0.3 looks to be a good value. And also set the contrast to maybe 10, 10 is a bit too much so let's go with 5, yep 5 looks to be a good value. For the saturation I'm also gonna bump it up to 5, you can of course go crazy on this but 5 seems to be a good value. Alright, and now we are ready to play this. And yeah, I think it starts to look good for ready. Doesn't it? But yeah, of course we can do a much better job and we will. And also the first thing we need to do is bump up the reflection resolution. So if we just close this and go to reflection probe. And let's bump up the resolution to 512. Alright, and, and now this should make the reflections look a bit vivid and clear. And now we are ready to use the backlighting lighting to make our scene look even more better. But this video has grown out to be too long, so I'm just gonna divide this into two parts. So, so in the second part we will handle all the backlighting. lighting, so stay tuned for that and it will be out soon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.